video. It's getting cold. I've been in Colorado and uh, now Utah for the last month and it's getting cold and so it's time to be doing a video on heaters. I get lots of questions. People ask me about how am I going to stay warm? Are the heaters safe? Will they work? Will they break? On and on and on. Uh, I don't want to die. I mean, that's the big question that I get all the time is I don't want a heater that will kill me. And so that we'll address all those questions today. So a lot of you are stuck being in the cold and you want to know what heater will work? Will I be safe? Will it kill me? And uh, what should I do about the cold? And so today we're going to, uh, in this video, we're going to address all those questions. The two by far best solutions is well, to add a heater. And I hear this all the time too. People say, well, just get a really good sleeping bag, a, a sleeping bag that's good for 20 below so you can sleep and be comfortable. Well, you know, that, to my mind, that is not the answer. That is not a solution. There are 24 hours in a day. You're going to spend eight hours, maybe, in a sleeping bag. So you're going to be warm and comfortable eight hours of a day. And let's assume that during the day, most of us where we are, it gets warm. Although if you're in New York or Minnesota, that's not a safe assumption at all. It will be cold during the day. That means you can only be in your van or your RV eight hours to sleep. And that's the only time you'll be comfortable. I didn't move into a van to be miserable all the time. And it being 34 degrees in my van, uh, 16 hours a day is not comfortable. That is not how I want to live. It doesn't need, I don't need all the comforts of an apartment. I don't want an apartment on wheels. That's why I live in van. But I don't want to be miserable either. That's unacceptable. So to my mind, providing heat is an essential. Insulate your van, that's really critical. If you insulate your van, you don't need much heat. Uh, a little bit of heat from one of these heaters will warm you right up. Uh, so, yes, uh, to my mind, getting a good sleeping bag is essential. You turn these heaters off at night, and so you want a good warm sleeping bag and to sleep warm, but you also want a source of heat. And to my mind, that's just, I'm not going to live this way without it. And then also, I am a snowbird. I do go to where it's warm, but they're, they're shoulder seasons, and I always, fall is one of the best times to be in most places. Fall is fantastic in Colorado. That's what I was doing there, shooting uh, photos and videos of the fall in Colorado. Fall's cold, <laughs> and if you're there in the fall because it's pretty, you're gonna get cold. So my recommendation is that yes, you need to probably need to have a heater. Some of you may never be in the cold country, you may never have to work, you may never have to go where it's cold, but that's unlikely. Most of us need a heater. And yes, you won't use it a lot, but when you want it, boy, you want it. Do they work? Yes, they work. Everyone who has one of these heaters will tell you, yeah, in, a, in the small space of a van, they're too much heat. This, this is the Mr. Buddy, which probably most of you will buy and have, and it will put out too much heat for any van. Uh, you'll turn it on, you'll bake, and you'll turn it off. They work, you will stay warm. This is the Little uh, Buddy, also made by Mr. Heater. Mr. Heater is the company, and the model is Little Buddy, Mr. Buddy, and then they have a bigger one, Big Buddy, and I don't have one of those out here. They're so big. I don't really recommend those for most van dwellers. They're perfect for an RV, but not for a van. They're just so huge, and there's too much heat. This is the Olympian. This is the largest. It's a Wave 8. It stands for 8,000 BTUs, and they have a Wave 3, which is 3,000 BTUs. We're going to do a separate story with my friend Joe who owns this one because he has an RV and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do a, a separate video with this and we'll talk to him about Olympians. We won't go into it in great detail now. Any one of these heaters, the Wave 3 would be best for a van. We'll keep, and it's small, it's probably half, half this size like that. It's a much smaller heater and it's all you'll need for a van and it'll be very, work extremely well for your van. Are they safe? That's your next question. That's the question everyone does. I don't want to die, Bob. I don't want to die with one of these little cheap heaters. This is just a little cheap heater. This thing's going to kill me, isn't it? Used properly, no. Used improperly, yes, you will die. And let's make that very clear. These things are totally capable of killing you. And I'm not going to deceive you in any way. Now let me make something else equally clear. Gas, anything that burns a fuel will kill you. Period. Everything. You have to use it properly. The most you want to live, you get this thing out and you read it and you follow it. Here, and so my advice still is to buy one of these. You will be safe if you read this and do exactly what it says. Uh, 
And how do I, why am I so certain of that? We all make, we all make, uh, hate lawyers and make lawyer jokes. But the one thing they're really good at is if Mr. Buddy makes a bad product and you use it properly and it kills you, they will be sued out of existence. The fact that Mr. Heater is still in business says this is a safe product or some lawyer would have sued them out of existence. You use these properly, you use any gas burning appliance properly, it will be completely safe. And it's not even difficult to do it properly. There are two key things on gas burning appliances. The first is ventilation. They have to get air. If these don't get enough air, they will burn uh, poorly. If they burn poorly, they will produce carbon monoxide and they will kill you, period. But if you give them enough ventilation, they will burn properly and, and forever and they will, you will be perfectly 100% safe. So you read the manual and I did. <laughs> I bought this thing and I read the manual because I want you to see this. Let's look at this. Okay, what does it say here? This heater requires a vent area of four square inches. You give this heater a vent area of four square inches and it will be 100% safe. You do not give it four square inches and you will die. I mean, it's just that simple and I want to make sure you understand this. I'm not kidding around here. You will die. They will kill you. But if you do this simple thing, and how hard is it to give it four square inches? You roll down the window, one of your windows an inch, and it's 20 inches across, and there's 20 square inches. So uh, you just make sure you give it enough ventilation, and then it will burn properly, and you'll be 100% safe. I just really want you to understand that. And all you have to do is read the manual, and it says it right here. It's the first page of this thing. Here's the cover. Here's the safety instructions. Read them. Really, truly, honestly, read them. It, it's, it's life and death. Now, let's look at uh, clearances. The other, special, the other thing, which is critically important, is clearances. These babies put out a lot of heat, and if you don't give it enough clearances, it will catch whatever is in front of it on fire, and you will die. Yes, it will kill you. But if you give it enough clearance, what will happen? You'll be 100% safe. So it's very simple. Above it, you need 30 inches. In front of it, you need 24 inches. Beside it, you need six inches. To the rear of it, zero. It can be backed right up against the wall. All the heat goes forward. And if you follow these two simple rules, you give it plenty of ventilation, four square inches is nothing. So give it its four square inches and give it extra. Personally, I drop each front window by half an inch. That will be plenty for this heater and the uh, or nearly any of them. Make sure that nothing ever is this close, front, tops, or side. The bigger one, this is the ones we looked at it for the smaller one. This one requires, what we say, uh, eight? Nine. Nine. Nine square inches. We looked it up out of its manual just like this. Nine square inches. I, again, you drop each window by a half inch. They're probably 20 inches across, and that's 10 inches on each one. Drop each one by half an inch. The front windows, you'll have a ventilation, you'll have a cross flow, you'll have plenty of air. And people will say, well, if you've got to open the window, you won't be warm. Believe me, these things put out so much heat. You can open every window in the van and turn this thing on and you'll be warm. Uh, now, that's an exaggeration, but they put out a lot of heat. And that little bit of ventilation is going to have no impact. So these are safe, used properly. Get your manual out, read it, understand it, obey it. You will be 100% safe and you don't have to worry. There is a danger of falling over. And if they do, they both have a, uh, a sensor and they will automatically turn themselves off. But for that reason, uh, and both of these say, do not leave it on overnight while you're asleep. And do not leave it, I personally would never leave it on overnight. It says so in the manual. Next, we'll move on to the cop, the price of running them. They both run, these two run on the um, green bottles. That's what their native designed to do. So this one screws in here, screws in, and that's it. That's how this one sets and it burns uh, the green bottles. This one has an, a flap here and it pulls out. It's really a pretty cool deal. It pulls in and out and it screws into here and then you push it in. They're both designed to run on green bottles. The green bottles are expensive. This one burns about, oh no, this one burns about a green bottle in about five hours. This one is probably on high would be, man, that would be a lot more. I don't even know how far, how long this will last on high, but it's not very long. It'll be expensive. These green bottles are a minimum of three, this is the green bottle, is a minimum of three or four dollars each uh, and up. 
five or six in places. And so that's going to get really, really expensive. So I have a solution. Now, let's talk about the Olympian. The Olympian is hose. It has its own hose. It's in there somewhere. And it attaches to your propane system directly and will only run off of a propane system. You can't use the green bottles on these. So this has to be plumbed into your system. That makes them pretty cheap to operate. So here's the solution. They cost so much to run that here is the solution. This is a two and a half gallon bottle. I like small bottles uh, because they're easier to fit in the van. Normally, there you buy would buy a five gallon propane bottle, which is the exact outside dimensions. This will fit perfectly in a uh, in a milk crate and snugly, tightly in a milk crate, just exactly like a five gallon bottle will. Outside, it's exactly the same, but the five gallon bottle is probably this tall, so it's about half the height. It's literally half the volume. So, uh, and I really like these smaller ones. You can also buy a one gallon bottle, which is tiny, about the same height, and it's only, it's about like that around. Uh, and so you can either get a one gallon bottle, a two and a half gallon bottle, or a five gallon bottle. And now, how are you gonna hook this up to this? This uses green bottles, it can't be done, can it? That's the problem with this one. I can't do it, I haven't figured out how to do it. But it's very easy with the Mr. Buddy, you have a, hose attachment. This just screws in here. See? Now it's just that simple. Instead of screwing in a green bottle, I'm screwing in this hose. And then the other end is designed to fit in here. It will screw right into here. And so now the, this is connected to the, this is called a bulk bottle. And I can take this and refill it two to three dollars per gallon when you go and you buy it in bulk. So you're paying two to three dollars a gallon, depends on the country and a part of the country you're in, versus this green bottle. This green bottle is one pound, and it takes four of these to make a gallon. So I paid five dollars, four ninety-nine for this bottle. Four green bottles at five dollars a green bottle is twenty dollars a gallon. I can fill this one for $2.50 a gallon, which is cheaper. Would you rather pay $20 a gallon for the propane in this green bottle? The exact same propane. Or $2 to $3 a gallon for the propane in this bottle? Well, obviously, I'd rather pay two than 20. And so what you wanna do is buy this hose. This is a $20 hose. You can buy this hose at Walmart, this exact hose, and connect it to here, and then you're, you're running off of cheap, refillable propane. But, that raises a problem. And you've heard that Mr. Buddies need a filter, and they do. Do not run a Mr. Buddy without a Mr. Buddy filter. Absolutely true. It will ruin your Mr. Buddy. I mean, it will ruin it. This is a low pressure device. This connects to the propane system in the RV, or you could connect it to your own bulk bottle. I could connect it to this bottle. The propane in this bottle is high pressure. So to make this low pressure, you put a regulator in here and that reduces the pressure coming out of there to low pressure, to a universal number that all propane devices use. But this is a high pressure device. Remember I said you just plug, you just screw this thing in straight in, no regulator. Now, there is a regulator inside it. It's built in into the appliance that reduces it to low pressure. Here's what the difference is. There's this hose, which is designed to use with that, or, or uh, a, a regular stove, and there's this hose. They're exactly the same hoses, but there's a key difference. This hose is under low pressure because it's behind a regulator. This hose is under high pressure because there's no regulator. The pressure on this hose leaches out an oil, and that oil gets flies in through the hose into your Mr. Heater and plugs up the jets. The hose is the culprit, and so it ruins it. And if you put in a Mr. Buddy filter, that will protect it from the oil. It will collect, keep, collect the oil and the, the jets won't get plugged up. The filter is 10 bucks. It'll last you at least a year. Every year, throw it away after every season. You get a new one at the beginning of the season, 10 bucks a year, that's just no big deal. 
Let me be honest and say I've not heard good a lot of good reports about these things. They the durability. They 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 fail on too often. I've become kind of disenchanted with Mr. Heater because they just seem to break a lot. If you're in a if you have a generator that you run a lot or if you have um, this is just an electric plug-in heater and or if you're in an RV park uh, electric heat works really well. Uh, you, you're not going to ever have enough solar to run this thing, ever, ever, ever. Don't even give that a thought. You're never going to run this off batteries uh, under any conditions. But if you're in an uh, RV park or access to shore power of whatever kind, um, you can use this for heat. You can buy 12-volt blankets. Uh, they're more of a wrap. Uh, you can buy them as a sleeping pad. You put it down on your bed, you turn it on, you can actually lay down on it and they'll have a timer and it will go off after a certain amount of time. 12 volt pads are doable or sleeping or blankets, 12 volt blankets are reasonable if you have enough solar and enough battery bank. Uh, that is a possibility and, and you know if you can just keep you really warm and cozy while you're in the, in the van in the evening from 5 when the sun goes down to 10 or 11 when you go to bed, uh, that might be enough and you wouldn't have to have a heater, but you'd have to have a pretty good sized solar and a big battery bank. All these devices, anything that burns propane, puts out a lot of moisture. It's just the physics of burning propane that you are getting a lot of moisture. And you have to expect that that moisture is going to fill your van and you will get condensation. And there is then a risk of mold because you're going to have moisture tucked into everything in your van. So be aware that that is a big issue and there is no good solution for it. Moisture will just be a big problem. The, the solution for moisture in the van is ventilation, which is again a reason why you want to keep windows cracked. And in the out west where it's so dry, normally even in the winter it's really dry, uh, it's not much of an issue. So there you go, I'm going to stop. That's heaters. You can stay warm. These are safe. Use properly. They are entirely safe. Use with a bulk bottle. They're not terribly expensive. You can probably afford it. Don't, don't be miserable in your van. I mean, I'm not telling anyone to come out and live in a van or an RV and be miserable. That's not the goal. Our goal is to have our best possible life. And having heat is part of your best possible life. I'm convinced of that. So uh, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and insist on living your best possible life. Don't settle. Don't settle for a, a mediocre, unhappy, barely surviving life. Be happy. Uh, and we'll talk to you later.